So one of the requests we get the most is to do a video on how to create water in Unity. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> And as with many things in game development, there are about a billion different ways to create water, from realistic water with refraction to a more cartoony look. Of course, all these techniques are great if you've been working with Unity for a long time and want to pour, pun intended, a lot of effort into making the perfect water for your game. However, I think most of us probably just want to get some darn water working. So in this video, we'll have a look at how to create a water shader in what I think is the simplest possible way. This should also help act as a solid base if you want to look into expanding the effect with stuff like reflections, refraction, sign-based waves, or normal maps. But before we get into it, this video is sponsored by Hostinger. If you've ever thought about creating a website or hosting your game on a server, I really recommend you check out their different web hosting services. They are extremely fast, very affordable, easy to get started with, and provide a lot of value in their different solutions. And their website builder will make everything a lot easier for you. Trust me, building a website from scratch can be something else. <laughs> but what makes this really cool for game hosting is that they also offer cloud hosting services, which means that you can store your or your users game data in the cloud. Get 82% off for web hosting and a free domain included and use the coupon code Brackies for an additional 15%. Simply click the link in the description to get started. Also, our friends from Game Dev Unchained are hosting a really cool event. It's called GDUX and it's basically an online game development conference. I think this is such a cool thing, since events like GDC can offer often be hard for the average developer to attend, both because it's often very expensive and in another part of the world. So instead, GDOX is going to be fully online and freely accessible. The event will have three days of talks, all live streamed, which will include plenty of time to talk to other developers. Anyway, just thought you guys should know about it. If you think it sounds cool, we'll have a link for that in the description. Now let's get floating. So first of all, you need to make sure that you're using Unity 2019.1 or later, and that your project is set up to use the lightweight render pipeline. If you don't know how to do that, I'll of course have a link to where you can learn how in the description. Now let's go ahead and right click in our hierarchy here and let's create a 3D object plane. And this is going to be the base object for our water. I'm just gonna go ahead and scale it down and kind of move it up and above some of the other objects here. Let's go ahead and rename this to simple cartoon water. Let's also go to our project and create a new shader. And let's create a PBR graph. Let's call it cartoon water and hit enter. And to create a material based on this shader, let's right click on it and go create material. And we can also call this cartoon water. Let's take this material and drag it onto our plane. And that's pretty much all the setup we need to do. I'm also just going to show you my lightweight render pipeline settings. Just so if something isn't working for you, you can try to replicate these. One thing that I've noticed is that working with transparent materials is a bit weird when cascade is set to two or four. So for now, I'm gonna leave this at no cascades. Let's then double click on our cartoon water shader to open it up in shader graph. Now the first thing that I'm gonna do is change the preview here from a sphere to a plane. So I'm gonna choose custom mesh and search for the plane here and select the default plane. I'm also going to go to our master node here and click on the little cog and change the surface type from opaque to transparent. And now we're ready to add some nodes. And the first thing that I'd like to do is give our water a base color. So let's go to our blackboard and let's add a color. And let's call it base color. Let's make this a bright blue something like that. Let's drag this in and link it to our albedo. And right away you can see that our water changes color. However, having water that is only one color is of course not so interesting. So let's go ahead and add some ripples. To do this, we'll hit space and search for the Voronoi node. This is a very interesting type of semi-random noise and it's perfect for ripples since it creates all of these weird looking cells that if we distort them a bit, will look like ripples in water. In fact, let's try and do that now. So if we adjust the angle offset here over time, we can get a really interesting effect. To do that, let's create a time node. Let's hook this up to a multiply node in order to be able to control the speed of these ripples. So let's go ahead and actually create a vector one for this. And let's call it ripple speed. And let's just default it to something like 0.1 drag it in and hook it up to our multiply. 
and let's take the multiply over to our angle offset. And right away, we can see that they are slowly changing. Let's go ahead and bump this up to say one. And we can now see how the different cells are kind of moving around. We can also adjust the cell density here. That's how many cells are kind of packed together. So you can see we can increase or decrease that. In fact, let's go ahead and create a property to control this. So let's again add a new vector one. Let's call this ripple density. And let's default it to something like seven. Let's drag that in, hook it up to our cell density and clean up our graph a bit here. There we go. The next thing that I want to do is kind of tighten up the edges of our Voronoi. Currently everything is very blurred together and I'd like to bring out more contrast in the Voronoi in order to really show these lines going across. So to do that, let's take the output of our Voronoi and plug it into a power node. And for the power here, let's try and set that to something like five. And now we really start to see how this looks like ripples in water. Let's just quickly create a property for this as well. So up here, another vector one, let's call it, let's call it slimness. And we can just default it to five. Let's make some space here, drag in that ripple slimness and hook it up. And I think at this point, we're ready to start mixing together our ripples with our base color. However, in order to do that, we probably want to give our ripples some color other than just a solid white. So let's again go up here, let's create a color property and let's call it ripple color. For this one, I'm going to choose as the mode HDR, just in order to allow us to control the intensity of our ripples. Let's set the color to a bit brighter of a blue and let's also give it an intensity of say one. We can then take the ripple color and multiply it into the output of our power node. So let's go multiply and multiply that with our ripple color. And we can really quickly start to see how that looks pretty cool. And let's then add that on top of our base color. So let's take the output of our base color into an add node and let's have the ripples go on top. And there we go. You can kind of see how we've created this cool looking ripples in the water. And if we simply go from the output of our add node into the albedo, we can see what that looks like when overlaid onto a plane. And that is really the base of our water effect. Let's also decrease our alpha to something like 0.8, just to make the water a tiny bit see-through. And with that, let's try saving this asset and going into Unity and voila, we actually have some fairly decent looking cartoonish water and everything is done with just these few notes. You can of course select the material and try and play around with the base color as well as the ripple color in order to get a nice blend between the two. But I actually think that the default settings here are already looking quite fine. However, one thing that I think is a bit boring is the way that the Voronoi is currently moving. It does seem like the water is flowing, but it does so very uniformly. Let's go ahead and add another layer of distortion to this using a radial shear. So if we go into our cartoon water here, you can see that our Voronoi node has a UV input. And this means that we can go ahead and create another node here called the radial shear. This is going to go ahead and kind of distort our Voronoi by rotating it around a center point. Now I'm just gonna set the strength of this to something like one by one, but you can see how really quickly that makes the effect much more interesting to look at. And if we save that and go straight into Unity, I think that already looks much, much cooler. You can definitely play around with adding multiple layers of noise like this to make your water stand out. So our water is looking pretty cool now. However, the plane is still completely flat. And as you know, water kind of moves around a bit. So let's try and add vertex displacement to make this effect more interesting. To do that, let's open up Shader Graph again. And on top of everything we have going on here, let's try and create a gradient noise. Let's go ahead and set the scale of this to something like five. You can of course create a property for that if you want. And as you can see right now, this noise is completely static. So let's have it move over time. We can do that really easily with a tiling and offset node. So let's hook that up to the UV of our gradient. And as you can see, we can now control our noise by simply moving the offset of our tiling and offset node. In fact, if we go ahead and update this over time, so let's add a time node and let's take the output of this time node and let's multiply this so that we can control the speed. In fact, let's go ahead 
and create a vector one here. Let's just call this wave speed. Let's default it to something like 0.1. Let's drag it in, hook it up to our multiply node and hook our multiply node up to the offset. You can of course control this on the X and the Y independently if you want to be able to control the direction. But for me, I just like it to scroll in any direction here. So I'm just gonna go for both at once. And as you can see right away, the gradient noise is now moving across the screen. So at this point, we can take the gradient noise and we can multiply it into the normal vector of our object. In the case of our plane here, the normal vector is the vector that points up. So if we multiply it into the up vector, we can distort the plane on the y axis. So to do that, we'll simply create a normal vector node. And this is going to be in object space. And we'll simply multiply this, we'll multiply that with our gradient noise. And then we can add that. So we'll go into an add node here on top of our current position. So on top of the vector position here, and that is also in object space. So we're simply adding that onto the normal position and taking the output of that. So that is the distorted position after our waves have been applied and dragging it into the position input of our master node. Now that is going to go pretty crazy in the preview here. I'm just going to go ahead and load in a plane again so we can see this working on an ordinary plane. And that looks pretty good if we try and just move this over a bit. There we go and save this asset and go into Unity, we can indeed see how the plane is being shifted on the Y axis and our water now looks way more realistic. In fact, if we go ahead and add another object on top of our water here, so I have a tiny rubber duck, we can see how the water is kind of shifting up and down this duck. Yay, that looks really cool. And that's pretty much it for this water effect. Now again, there are a thousand things that you could do to improve this water. You could do reflections and refraction. You could add foam whenever the water intersects with objects, such as where it's hitting the dog right here. In fact, you can do that really simply using the same technique as shown in our force field video. So if you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. And yeah, there are just a lot of opportunities for you to customize this and make it your own. I definitely encourage you to do so. However, this should definitely act as a solid base. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Also, don't forget to check out Hostinger for fast web hosting solutions. Simply click the link in the description to get started. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will go change my shirt. Also, special thank- Hey, do you want to do it? Yeah, you should do it. Alright. Thanks to all of the Patreon supporters who donated in April. And a special thanks to Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mami, Dennis Sullivan, Chris, Shane Cleveland, Fai Faisal, 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 Faisal Marify, Lincoln Chung, Leo Lisset, Runen, Daniel Dusanik, Konstantinas Karentas, Naoki Iwasaki, Gregory Pierce, Rob Fern, Dr. Poon Moon, Erasmus, Kirill Sviderski, Tim Avhaltabak, and Tyson Konovsky. You guys... No, you know what? I, I can't. I'm not authorized for that. You have to do that. You guys rock. <laughs>